school libraries and classrooms. And I'm really excited to be moderating this panel. My name is Tess Prendergast. I am a librarian and an LIS educator in Vancouver, Canada. And um, we're going to have a really upbeat and very fruitful discussion today. And I hope you have a great time. Um, I'm going to have an open, before I get the panel to introduce themselves, just by a show of hands, I want you to think back to um, when you were in school, elementary or middle or any time in your school, that you remember having an author visit your class, or if you remember being taken to your public library to meet an author. Put up your hands if that ever happened to you. There's a very small number of people. Uh, and, um, did any of the panelists put up their hands? Just the, just one. One time, one person. Okay, just keep that in mind um, as we go through our discussing um, the things, that, the topics uh, the that we're going to cover today. I'm going to ask my panelists to introduce themselves. We're going to go down the table and then we're going, we have a series of questions that I'll be asking the panelists. Uh, the slideshow is just a revolving slideshow to inspire um, that uh, you can look at any time. And so go ahead, start introducing yourselves. Sure. Um, hi everyone, my name is Clarabelle Ortega. I write middle grade and YA and my debut Ghost Squad, which is Coco Meet Stranger Things, comes out next year with Scholastic. Hello, I'm Mia Garcia and I wrote The Resolutions, which came out in November of last year, which I would describe was like a Latinx version of The Breakfast Club. Um, and I also wrote Even If the Sky Falls, which is a romance set in New Orleans. Hi, I'm Jeff Letty, I'm Micah. Uh, I'm the author of Hi. <laughs> uh, six, about 16 books for uh, young adults and adults. And my newest, uh, just came out in September, is A Heart and a Body in the World. Hello, my name is Abby Cooper. I am a middle grade author. I've got two books out so far, Sticks and Stones and Bubbles. Um, my next book is called Friend or Fiction, and that comes out this October. Yay. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Gabrielle Prendergast. Uh, I also publish as G.S. Prendergast, and I'm an author of um, young adult and middle grade, and also my debut picture book is coming out this summer. Uh, and um, you can have bookmarks. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I'm going to direct this question at Deb. Um, what? Is it, uh, imagine with the, the number of books that you have written. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Um, what What do you think are the benefits of author visits to schools and libraries? Don't, no, not on? <laughs> now you're okay. Okay. I think you have to speak quite close to it. Yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, I just, I never go into a school thinking about actually my books or uh, selling my books. I shouldn't say that with my editor sitting right there. <laughs> um, but I really just want to connect with the kids and I have that, I feel like I have something to say to especially, you know, a few kids who really need what I have to tell them. Maybe ones who are struggling a bit or um, who just, you know, I kind of I kind of had a little bit of a, a scary, kind of scary childhood. And I want to speak to those kids who really need to hear how you persevere through that and how folks help me persevere through that. And so that's what I really come to talk about with them. Um, I just want to connect in that way. Sometimes there's readers and writers in the audience and they want to ask those kinds of questions, but I just want to, I want to talk about that stuff. I want to talk about the life stuff and I want to connect to them uh, and help them feel empowered uh, in their own life. That's always my intent. Excellent, and I see lots of the other panelists nodding their heads. So if you want to add to that question, some of the benefits of visiting authors or even, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say also, like, I'm a Latinx. I'm from Dominican Republic. And, like, um, growing up, I, I grew up in the South Bronx. And you're not really encouraged to go to college or high school when you live in a place that is just 
impoverished. Um, so having school visits in, at those kind of places, kids can see an option for themselves um, where they don't really see role models in their community. Um, and especially if they see someone who looks like them, I think it's really important because it makes it more attainable to them. So I think going along the same lines, like <coughs> kids who struggle with certain things, also kids who, you know, are kids of color um, or queer kids who, you know, don't see that in their everyday life or don't get that from, from their school, um, we can help provide sort of that inspiration and that guidance. Yeah, I think a lot of, um Sometimes when I visit classrooms, or people have a misunderstanding that authors are going to those places to promote their books. But you know, I'm visiting in sort of grade three and grade four, and they, they don't they don't have money on them. I'm not selling my my books at those things. So so visiting classrooms is, is, is particularly classrooms, but also libraries is not really a promotional activity that we do for ourselves. It's kind of like a, a side gig. Um, but we all, I think, certainly everybody here at this table and every other author that I've ever spoken to who does it, sees it as a sort of social service too, like that it's really important to us that, that kids engage just in general with literature, not necessarily with my books, but in general. Anyone else on the panel have anything to add to that question before we... Okay, so the next one is a little bit more specific. It's still around what uh, benefits there are for students, but um, if you have anything that's very specific about what students can learn from author visits, um, you know, in terms of their, I don't know, their career goals or uh, learning about uh, reading choices, anything specific that you try to bring with you? Um, maybe I'll ask uh, Abby that. You seem like you're ready to answer. Well, I think there's kind of this overarching, like, thought that, like, to be an author, you have to be, like, an old, white, dead guy. Um, <laughs> like, there's just a lot of that. Like, growing up, that's sort of how I imagined all authors. It wasn't until I was in, like, sixth grade and I went to this conference where I met a real-life author when I realized, you know, authors can be from all kinds of backgrounds. They can be all ages, all religions, all whatever. And also, they are real, live, breathing human beings who, like, have dogs and eat snacks and like watch Netflix, they're just like me. And for me as a sixth grader, that really gave me the sense that this, you know, far away goal of mine of like being an author one day, which I never really thought I could do, um, it really encouraged me that like, okay, authors are like me. They write, they work hard. And if I keep writing and if I work hard, I could be an author too, like me, I could do it. And so I think I really try to bring that message every time I go to schools. Um, and not necessarily, you know, not all kids want to be authors, although they should, it's awesome. But whatever their dreams are, you know, I really try to encourage and say all these people who are, you know, authors and musicians, and, and you know, even if your dream is to go to college or whatever it is, you know, everybody who does those things, we're all just people who work hard. And I think it's great for kids to see that in person. Um, and I get a lot of positive feedback that like kids, not only did they learn a lot about writing and being an author in books, but they were really inspired to persevere and to chase after their dream and to work hard and to keep going even if they, you know, get one rejection at something or like 80 rejections hypothetically. But you know, um, so, you know, it just, I mean, the gamut of benefits of author visits for kids, it's just like different. I totally agree. I, I think it's really important for kids to see authorship and writing as a viable career option. Even if it's, you know, even if they're only in the second grade, they should see it as something that they could do. So, and that is the kind of benefit I see. That's great. Thank you. I have a little something, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm I'm just, sure. yeah uh, please add. Yes, I was just going to pick on you, actually. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, I, what I love most is when I, when I do visits is that I can tell when I, when I tell kids it's they have value in their own story, and then I can immediately pick out the kids who like 
didn't realize it until I said it, yeah. that they are allowed to be in fantasy novels and they're allowed to want to like be a wizard and all that, all those stories are valid. Um, that they, particularly the writers, I, I, in my last visit I could like immediately pick out the five writers who were like writing everything down. And then I was like, if you want to be Puerto Rican and in Harry Potter, you can do it. It's like, it's not, you know, it's not like illegal. You're not like, you can't be like one thing or the other. You're, like, even though you don't see it, you're allowed to own your story and put it out there in the world. And it's important to be able to do that. And I was going to ask you a question because I think you were one of the panelists, Mia? Yeah. Uh, Mia, that did not have author visits when you were growing up? No. Um, yeah. I have a question. Can you speculate just what it might have been like for you, um, you know, if you'd known about writing or met an author when you were in school? Like, what, what would have, what, what might have been different for you in your writing career if you hadn't I, seen it? Well, I think I would have, I would have seen writing as a career earlier. I didn't, I didn't think that I could be a writer until I was like 17 or 18 um, because, you know, we, we only had our school library and that was very limited. Um, we didn't have public libraries in my neighborhood. You only had like, your school library or the law library. That's all you had. Um, and I was really interested in the law books. I had no idea what was happening. Um, but it wasn't, a, yeah, it wasn't until like I graduated high school and someone was like, you know you love to write. And I was like, yeah, so? Um, I was like, you can be that. And I was like, I don't, I pre like you said, I'm like pretty sure all, all authors are dead. Like they're not, <laughs> there is no new literature happening past a certain, we're just reading the same stuff over and over again. <laughs> So writing yeah. mornings, it might feel that way, yeah. too. <laughs> Before coffee. Before coffee, it might feel that way, exactly. I think a, a lot of us, and some of the quotes are up here, but I think a lot of us hear as feedback that once the kids have met us, then they start writing their own books. Yeah. And that works in two ways, because um, also once the kids have met an author, they start reading books. So often kids who've never really that been that interested in books, for some reason, once they meet an author, it humanizes it for them or something, and then they're like, oh, well, I want to read her book for sure, because she was funny. And then, boom, we have a reader. But I think it's really cool that, like, an after activity that kids often do is like, well, now we're writing books. I think that's amazing. Does anyone else have anything else to add if you can speculate about what it might have been like if you'd met an author earlier in your life? I definitely would have started writing books earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like that's, you know, I mean, can't go back in time, but just think about the lost opportunity, the lost uh, years of, of, of writing. So um, all this to, you probably get the drift here. We're building a rationale for doing the work that it takes to have authors come to your schools and libraries um, because of that, the potential that you're building in the young people that you're serving. So um, we're just going to be very overt about our bias <laughs> towards author visits here. Um, so um, thank you, that's great. Uh, we're going to move on to, um, uh, we've talked a, quite a bit, a bit already in general terms about our, the goals that you set when you go to visit a class. Like you want to connect with the kids, I heard. Um, you want them to see that writing is a viable um, option for people, who, you know, kids who, who, um, uh, who haven't considered writing as an author, as a, as a career option. Um, why don't you share some of the reactions that you've had from students who've come to your presentations? Um, and I think I'll go with, um, let's see, who haven't I picked on for a while? Yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Um, so Sorry, I, do, I do writing workshops when I go Great. to um, classrooms, which is really fun. And um, I give them all, like, all my social media and my email, like, after I leave. And I love it because we'll start a writing exercise in the class, and then they'll send me the, the rest of the story. And, like, sometimes we'll go back and forth for, like, a couple months. Like, I'll give them notes on stories, and they'll be like, I got a new idea for this other thing. And... I love being able to connect with them that way and just like encourage their writing and like continue to like see them get really engaged and be able to encourage them beyond the classroom visit. Um, and you know, kids are really funny. Like I, I do this one thing where I, I have them um, do a villain origin stories, which they love. And one of the kids called me over and he's like, I'm a little worried because this is getting kind of dark. And <laughs> I was like, it's fine, just go with it. Like, just write whatever you feel. Um, so it's really fun, and it gives them, like, a chance to really express themselves in a way that they don't sometimes get to do in the classroom. I, one story that I always tell is that I went to this classroom 
uh, in northern BC, quite remote northern BC. And um, I think they were grade two or grade three. And I always start my discussions by asking people who likes to read and you know about half of the hands go up and then I say who doesn't like to read and half of the hands go up and um, you know because I want to validate that it's okay like no one's forcing you to read and so I had these boys they put their hands up and then we had a discussion and one of them said I don't like to read I don't like books I don't even like sentences <laughs> and I said, okay okay and then his friend said, well, you know how he said he didn't like sentences? I don't even like words. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then I said, what do you like to do? And he said, I like to build motorcycles. And, uh, you know, so this kid was like eight. I said, you like to build motorcycles. Wow, how do you, like, how do you know? How do you learn how to build a motorcycle? And he said, well, you know, my dad helps me. And I said, well, where does your dad, like, get that information? Like, do you, you know, do you help him find the, the tools and, like, how you're supposed to do it? And he's, and he, he was sort of confused, and I said, you know, like, there are bits of paper, like, that shows you how to do the things, and he was like, oh, like a manual? And he, I said, yeah, like a motorcycle maintenance manual, I guess. Do you have one of those? He was like, yeah. I said, do you like that? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And I was like, that's a book. <laughs> and then his friend, the one who didn't like sentences, he goes, wait a second. And he pulls out of his school bag this huge book. It was guns and ammo, right? These are kids up in the country. They're hunting deer and moose up there. Like, you know, this is wild BC, way up north. And so it was a kid had this gun, huge guns and ammo annual. And, and he said, is this a book? And I was like, yes, that's a book. And, uh, and, he, and I said, do you like that book? He was like, I love this book. He's carrying it around with him, right? He brought it from home. And I said, you like books. You like that book? You actually like books. And he was like, I like books. <laughs> because he'd been told that he didn't like books because he wasn't a strong reader and he didn't like Charlotte's Web or whatever was on offer. He didn't like Charlotte's Web. Because the animals don't get killed in Charlotte's Web, apparently. He liked Killing animals, you know, lives up in the up in the woods. Can't really blame him. So that's one of my favorite stories because I really just being me and being like, I'm not judging you. I don't want you to like my books necessarily. I mean, you know, you might not. It could be something else. But uh, he was into reading, and he didn't know that until that moment, and that was a really special moment. So it's a different perspective that authors can give because we're not. You know, we're not there to make sure that they pass tests or anything like that, right? It's all kind of open-ended. Yeah, and I clap. That's right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, that was, uh, we're, we're doing great for time, so if anyone else has a, a reaction story or something um, heartwarming or an anecdote or something, please, this is the time. This is where we're, we're really, we're going for the, we're going for the heartstrings now. So, anyone else have something? I don't know if mine's heartstrings, but I always like the look on their faces when, when they ask me where do I where do I get my story ideas. And I'm just like, just steal it. Just like yeah. start somewhere else. Like forget about it. Like do you, if you like Harry Potter, just like start rewriting Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. Like start there. It doesn't matter. You can like figure it out later. Um, and I always tell them like, it's okay to fail at this. Like as many yeah. times as like, you and have often. to. <laughs> yeah. And often I was like, yeah. it's cool. Yeah. I like those. I think it's just really cool to watch like identities blooming before your eyes, you know, kind of what other people were talking about. It's like, you know, when I do school visits, I'm sort of like, it's cool if they like my books, but in general, and I, I used to be a school librarian too, so I'm just kind of like, I don't care what books you read, just read the books, yay. Um, but it's really cool as an author to help them sort of recognize, like, I am a reader, like you did with that animal kid, yeah. or I am a writer. Whatever. Um, you know, because I do part of my presentation similar to what you do, where I, I kind of ask, like, you know, who likes movies? Who likes music? Who likes food? And, you know, all the hands go up. Who likes eating and having snacks? I've mentioned snacks like three times on this panel. I'm sorry. I might be getting hungry. Um, big fan of snacks. So I ask, and, you know, all the hands go, oh my gosh, snacks. And so I say, you know, you can write about that. You can read about that. And guess what? If you don't want to sit down and write like a long book or whatever, guess what? You can write a poem about snacks. You can write a rep. You can write an opinion essay. You can write a report about the facts on snacks, <laughs> which I just made up, but it should be a thing. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to, to watch kids.
kids kind of open their eyes and say, oh, yeah, I, I don't really like writing fiction, but I like writing poetry, and, and that I'm, I'm a writer. And I know as teachers and librarians, that's what you are encouraging every single day. I know. I was there. You're working hard to do that. Um, but I also know kind of all the factors working against you, um, just with schools and districts and tests and everything. Um, so, you know, if you're able to bring an author in who can help you sort of enrich the curriculum and add to these budding identities you're already forming, um, you're only going to see more great things happen. Okay, that was great. So we've talked to that. Those are our sort of why you do it, the, accru the accruing benefits of having authors come to your schools and libraries. So we're going to maybe have some funny stories or some maybe uh, other stories with this question. I'd like to hear from the panel, and I think I'll pick Deb um, to start. What can go wrong <laughs> in author business? What experience have you had that maybe needed a tweak or two? Well, this might, um, yeah. This might also, like, what I really want to tell you guys is how to make it go right. Yeah, we're getting to that question. Okay. <laughs> well, so, you know, two sides of the same coin. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, you go ahead. Um, I think that the greatest thing you can do, you. Like I said, I just want to make a connection with the kids. I mostly go speak at high schools. And so it can be a tough audience. And, and so I really want to make that connection right off the bat. And so usually I can do that with humor or whatever else. But man, you could make the job so much easier when they know a little bit about me before I come in or they know a little bit about my uh, books. And so even if that's just, even if they don't read the whole thing, if they read a chapter or something, so that they already kind of, we already kind of know each other a little bit before I, I come in, but then that that isn't that sort of wall of light, uh, you know. <laughs> so sometimes um, what can go wrong is is, is going in and, and there isn't that sort of preparation, that connection ahead of time. It's the end of the day. Everyone wants to go home. Maybe the crowd's too big, you know, because audience size can really help your your event go really well too. Say like. If you've seen classrooms versus an auditorium, it can really make things more intimate and, and you can connect better that way. So I think uh, really just the, the going wrong is sometimes when there isn't, there isn't that, that connection that kind of helps you really light that, light that thing right off, right off the bat. Does anyone else on the panel have anything to add to things that you could point to as ways to improve um, or um, I am um, probably not the only person in the panel who really appreciates when people um, put effort into pronouncing my name correctly um, and spelling it correctly. On you know sometimes I've they've been put a slide up and my name is misspelled on the slide. So that's just it's just a little thing and you know I have a, a long and kind of complicated name and that's that's the way it goes. But you're. You're setting it. If you're doing that in front of children, you're setting kind of a bad example, right? It's, but your, people's names are very important, so that's one thing. Um, and I also, I, I always do this, even though the teachers might have done this beforehand. But I always ask the kids um, if they know the difference between a question and a comment. <laughs> that's important. And for the younger kids, I think it's really, really helpful to have them prepare questions beforehand. Um, some kids are way too shy to ask a question, but they definitely want to ask a question. So those questions, sometimes teachers will give me cards, where the cards are um, are written. So uh, the, the questions are written on the cards. That's really helpful. All right, um, your attitude and the attitude and atmosphere of your building is so important. And I know you only have so much control over your building and other people, um, but you know from like teaching lessons. If you go into it and you're like, today we're talking about this, and you, you're, the kids can tell like you're not that interested in, in it, um, well then they're not going to be interested in it. Um, so I remember when I was teaching, you know, certainly some topics are more interesting to me than others, um, but whatever it was, I really would always challenge myself to say like, you know, today we're learning this, and the kids would be like, woohoo! And so it's really the same thing with author visits. Um, of course, you are likely to be excited, which is cool because you're here and yay for you. But I know that not necessarily every teacher or colleague in your building may feel the same way. Um, 
at a recent school visit I had, the third, it was supposed to be like third, fourth, fifth grade, the third grade teacher did not want to bring his class because it might interfere with his prep time or something or other. And, you know, eventually I basically said like, I will watch your class and as I presented. Um, but, unfortunately, the damage had sort of already been done because the students knew an author was coming. They knew their teacher didn't value it because their teacher said, oh yeah, an author's coming, but you know, you're gonna go to whatever. Um, and so the damage was sort of already done. They were there, but they were kind of looking at me like, okay, you know, you don't, what's the big deal? Um, because the teacher had sort of given them that impression. Um, so if there's anything you're able to do around the building, I know you can't change people's minds, but um, you know, I've been to schools where they've been like getting excited for my visit for weeks and like my face is everywhere and they've got like this big box like answer a trivia question about Abby Cooper and like so even if there is a teacher who's like oh authors who cares um the kids are getting enough messages sort of just from walking down the halls in your school that it actually is a cool and exciting thing and you also know that engaged excited kids unless they're like too excited but in general engaged excited kids are behaving well because they're engaged and excited so that helps too and that and that's just I mean obviously that makes us feel great if we're treated like celebrities at your school <laughs> but the other thing is if you know these are they're kids and they're impressionable so if you if you tell them that we're celebrities they'll believe that we're celebrities and then the fact that a celebrity is visiting their school makes them feel valued so that's you know like when I go to kid well, I'm not a celebrity I'm just a Canadian schmuck but when I go to schools kids are like I can't believe you're visiting our school you know and um, I, that makes me feel good that I'm making them feel valued because you know some of the I visited at the, the school in fact where my book um, Pandas on the East Side is set which is a downtown school and it's low income and the kids there were just so excited that I was there and that I had written this book that was you know the school in, in the book was um, inspired by their school they were just over the moon about it so that made me feel good because you know there's a lot of pressure on those kids um, I'll just, uh, I, a lot of the contacts we've been talking about have been, have been in schools, uh, but public libraries also host author visits and um, uh, I have hosted author visits and what I do, uh, depending on the time, usually what we find works best is if we schedule it during school hours and we invite local schools. Um, and I'm really careful about uh, knowing the book and the age it's, what it is, the age it's aimed at. Um, and then sort of um, inviting enough classes to fill that room. Um, sort of really cultivating and um, uh, you know, making that invitation very, very in, uh, intentional uh, to have those kids come and the teachers get excited about it. Um, and that's worked really well. Um, to not, you know, invite, oh, just any old school can come, but I've handpicked the grade three, four class or, or whatever because this particular book is going to be really resonant with, or, uh, re really resonate with them. So um, things are a little bit different in public libraries because uh, if you um, do it outside of school hours um, just and it's open to the public, which is great, um, kids are busy after school, they may not come. So. Uh, we, found, we have found that where I work that offering it during school hours um, and inviting some, some of our local classes, that works really well. Okay, um, we, uh, that was great. So if there are any other tips that you have for teachers and librarians on preparing, um, preparing for these visits, and then we're going to get into if there's any other last things, and then I've got one more question about, um, about funding. Um, I have, oops, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I have a tip that a lot of librarians want to have authors come to their library, but they don't really know how to go about mm -hmm. doing it, right? And that's what I get asked more than anything. Yeah. It's like, oh wait, we can have you? Like, yeah, you can have me. I, I want to go and see you. So um, I think there's a little bit of reticence or shyness or you know, that feeling of how you approach somebody or how you, and you know, I, I really urge people not to be reticent. Um, what can really work is, especially if we are, tour, a book is coming out and we are touring a certain area, or, or I don't know how you can find out ahead of time how uh, that, that something's coming or, or 
there's authors that you're interested in that are you keep your eye on who, who are going to have a new book out. That's kind of the time um, when people are planning a few couple months before that. To you could even contact uh, our our, our uh, publisher, our publicity team, or us personally and ask us um, where we happen to be or if we happen to, and we can pass that information along. And uh, that can that can be worked in sometimes if we're going to your region, uh, or it can be kept in mind to go to your region another another time. I think a lot of people don't don't worry about or worry about asking. We we love to see you guys. I love to see. You. And I think just checking the author's website too, like because a lot of us put that like on a tab or a page where you, it has information for school and library visits. Um, and what I was gonna um, add to the preparation thing, um, speaking of websites, is um, there's been a couple times where I go to libraries and they actually do like a whole tour of like my website and like my blog posts, like with the kids ahead of time and like they read some blog posts and it just, helps them get to know me before I get there. And like my blog posts are a lot more lighthearted and they're full of like gifts and like funny things. So it also helps the kids be more interested in meeting me, so. Excellent. Yeah, I would ahead. also, just quickly, I just want to add, um, if you are interested in having an author visit, but maybe, you know, it's just not possible this year for whatever reason, um, a lot of our authors also offer Skype sessions. Yeah. Um, usually free, 20 minutes. Uh, Q&A and it's I mean it sort of feels like you are almost really meeting um, and they can be you know just as effective and fun and once again super easy not daunting sounds daunting super easy go to the author's website click the little contact me button five minutes later well maybe not five we have to write but like soon you will have a Skype visit scheduled and it will be awesome so just another thing to consider um, that's thank you that's great so um for the most part, author visits. Well, we just need to acknowledge authors and writing. You know, it's a job, so it is. There, they, it's work, and we're not to expect authors to do this work for free. So the next question is um, to the panel, um, and I'm not sure who I'm going to pick on this time. Um, maybe Gabrielle. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, we'll hear from hear from a Canadian, and we'll hear from the from some of the U.S. authors, as I can see Canadians in the audience as well. So how have the libraries and uh, schools that you've gone to, how have they um, funded your visit? And um, how has that gone? Do you, just, just some of the ways that it's been funded. Um, uh, I've done some tours uh, in Canada, so and schools can apply to have an author visit as part of the um, TD Canada Children's Book Week tour. So TD Canada funds authors uh, to visit multiple locations in Canada. I'm not exactly sure how many authors. Um, and uh, in all provinces and territories. So every year I, when I apply, I apply to be sent to the Northwest Territories or none of it, but they haven't sent me there yet. Um, so I've done that. The TD's a bank, if yes. you guys if oh, yes. you didn't know. It's a, yes, it's a bank. And um, the BC Book Prizes also does a tours of regional BC. Um, and uh, library districts sometimes do tours. So I recently did a tour that was funded by the Fraser Valley Library District. And I went to both libraries and schools in the Fraser Valley. So that's kind of, and then there's, um, a lot of that money comes from the Canada Council. So I believe schools can actually apply directly to the Canada Council. Um, but also, my understanding is that most school districts have funding allocated to pay professionals to visit the classroom to give presentations. Um, and so you, some teachers have said, I, oh, we, we did this, your book in class, and I'd really like you to come to class. And I said, well, you know, this is my usual rate. And they're like, oh, I don't know. And I said, well, just ask. And they ask their principal, and their principal's like, sure. <laughs> so you know, some teachers don't know that, you know, the money is, is, is there, because, um, so definitely ask. Ask your principal, ask um, the school board, but the other thing that some teachers have done is just treat it like a field trip. So they send a note home with the parents and each kid has to come to school the next day with five dollars. Um, and the other thing I make clear on my website is if a school is experiencing financial hardship then we can always talk about it. So I do give freebies. I gave a freebie to the school whose I based <laughs> my school and my book on. I thought that was fair. Um, and uh, so I do sometimes give freebies, and most you know most authors are um, open to negotiating uh, rates and deals. If you can do more than one classroom, if you're spending the whole day, or you're doing the high school and then you pop into the elementary school, that sort of thing. But um, 
So there's a bunch of different ways that you can fund um, you can fund school visits. Anyone else want to add to you American uh, authors want to add to that? Yeah, I've actually done a, a whole bunch of school visits um, with uh, festivals and local events. Um, and usually whenever I pitch myself for a festival, they will always ask, are you willing to do school visits? Because they usually coordinate with local libraries and local schools and bring those authors in. They're already coming in for the festivals for the schools. So I've done a lot of, through that. Um, and I love Skype visit all the time. So I think that is definitely an avenue that you can look into. And I would love to expand more into that. Um, but I think asking if authors have a fee and they don't have a fee or if they're willing is never hurts to ask. Um, I just do things, um, I usually just get contacted on my website and I do it like directly with whoever's organizing um, the event or the visit um, and you know if it's a school that is in an impoverished neighborhood I, I can afford not to charge sometimes so I definitely do that um, and you know I haven't had a book out yet that kids can purchase but other authors that have been at the same event they sometimes they'll coordinate and have books for sale at the end of the event so kids They'll tell the kids to bring, you know, however much ten dollars um, to the event, and then they can choose which book they want to buy. And since they just met the author, it's kind of a nice incentive for them. So I've seen that done as well. Uh, for the non-Canadian folks in the audience, there are a lot of grants um, available, just regionally, locally. I've seen a million of them, even probably through your district. Um, PTAs are great to befriend. It again depends on your area. Um, I know oftentimes, unfortunately, you do need to justify, like, why do I need this money? And oftentimes, because the author needs to eat, she really likes snacks, is not a good enough reason. Um, so I, on my website, I, can't, I mean, I'm just going with it now. <laughs> um, so, but there have been, there, I want you to know that there are resources available to help you. Um, for example, on my website, I've actually compiled a bunch of them for this very reason, for you. There's a phenomenal article called, like, five reasons you should pay authors for visits or something. Um, and it cites also like Common Core and like curriculum and all that good stuff that will help you in your grant applications. Um, so yeah, I think I think it is, it is, there are ways, you know, grants and other groups, parent supported groups, um, you just gotta look for them. They're there. And like everybody else has said, we will, we are happy to work with you if there's some reason, you know, you're not. like. We do need to eat, but we also want to support your kids. So, like, we'll work with you. If we're, like I said, if we're in your area already and it's part of our touring, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we just come because we're there. And you can, oh man, maybe I'm just the, the sucker who always goes. Any, you know, I, I love to visit my local alternative schools or local high schools just because I love them and they ask me and and again I want to connect with them so sometimes um, c contacting your like SCBWI or whatever writing uh, organization you might have in your city if you want someone to come by sometimes sometimes we just love it and if, if your budget isn't allowing that uh, you might find a way that to, to to still you know find us that who, who just come to to wanna wanna see you guys. But we are I, I'm I'm amazed. We're totally on time. Uh, the next few minutes we're gonna go to questions and answers from the from the audience. And then um, we're going to signing and I think the signing is set up over yonder. <laughs> um, uh, so we're gonna take about five minutes, maybe five minutes of questions if there are any. And then we'll go to signing. So anyone have a question? Yes, yeah, see you in the front there. Thank you. Oh, oh, you got a mic? Oh, oh yes. A mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you go ahead. There's a mic. Um, could you say a little bit more about how um, online visits work through Skype? Is it just Q&A or are you able to do other things? What kinds of, uh, you know, what does that bring to do it that way? I just jumped on it. I do Skype visits all the time. They're so fun. I think I'm like addicted or something. I, I just can't stop. Um, so. It depends from author to author. Some authors have preferences for how they do it. Um, generally, the most popular way seems to be 20 minute free Q and A's. Um, and the Q and A's, you can really sort of adjust to your needs. If you want to focus on the author's books, you can have your kids 
my questions about those or being an author for a career or book recommendations and reading. I've done a Skype where I just like book talk. It was awesome. Uh, but so if you want to focus it in any certain direction, you can. Some authors offer um, different Skypes, like some authors offer workshops within a Skype. I also offer, if you want to do a longer Skype, like a 45 minute one, um, I charge a little bit, but not that much. But we can do that, and then I can go into, you know, giving a little spiel about revision or about the publishing process or whatever you're looking for more information about for your students. Um, and uh, did that answer your question? Um, and yeah, in terms of setting it up, authors are also really flexible too. I know Skype is actually not allowed in some buildings, um, so, but so if you want to do Google Hangout, I've seen Zoom, Blackboard, whatever your, your way is, we'll work with it. So don't be hesitant to, to reach out and we'll work with you to set it up and make sure it, it works. And also, don't be afraid of technol technological, I can't talk. You don't be afraid of tech challenges. They happen, we get it. I once, I've Skyped, I've done all kinds of Skypes. I've Skyped where I could see them, they couldn't see me. I could, they could see me, I couldn't see them. There was no sound, and so I was actually talking into the teacher's cell phone, and she was like holding it up. Um, we make it work, so. You can also invite more than one author on the Google Hangouts and Skype. But that's all, the, all my Skype visits and, and Google Hangouts. I've done panels with other authors where we speak to a group of writing students and we all introduce ourselves and we go into conversations about technique and like writing and publishing and it's usually like three or four of us and it's always worked really well. We're all like a little Brady Bunch situation on the screen. Yeah. You also mentioned that your website has resources for funding and libraries. What's your website? I have the Brady Bunch song, Brady Bunch song in my head now. Um, my website is abbycooperauthor.com. It's also on my bookmarks over here. And I hope it's okay. I just want to mention briefly, I'm actually signing, not here, but at the Charles Bridge booth at 2 o'clock. I'll be signing advanced copies of my next book. So don't go there if you want me. Go there. <laughs> Um, also, if you didn't, uh, all the authors' websites are on the handout. If you didn't get it, uh, take a quick picture or grab one of the one or all of the bookmarks. Uh, Gabrielle is going to post um, the handout on her website, and I think eventually the video, a link to the video of this whole session. Um, so please stick, uh, come and get your resources. Uh, did you still have a question? Okay, can you? I'm going to just get the front row, and then I'll get you. Oh, my question is. What is the best way to look for authors that are in your local area? Okay. What is the best that's way to repeat? I'll just, I'll just, no, that's okay. Um, the question is, what's the best way to um, look for authors who are in your local area to get a visit your, going? Your local SCBWI is a great one. Again, uh, Seattle, we have something called like uh, the Richard Hugo House, which is a writing center. You may have writing centers in your area. Um, book, your bookstore, your local bookstore will tell you who's nearby and who regu regularly does stuff or stops by their store could hook you up too. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Hi. Uh, I'm a school librarian here locally. And bringing an illustrator to my school soon. And I'm wondering, from your perspective, is there something I can do bring, when bringing an author or illustrator um, to help with that paperwork piece? Because if, when you work for a school district, there's a lot of, you know, this budget paperwork, insurance paperwork, and it's always a little uncomfortable to approach it. Sometimes there's more paperwork than other times, and I wonder, from your end, how is that perceived? Is it um, something to go, like, how much time should we allow for it? Um, is it perceived as just kind of one more thing to have to do? There's a lot of bureaucracy in the in bringing, so I'm trying to figure out how to soften that. Um, well, you know, all of us here have signed like 150 page contracts <laughs> um, that took sort of seven months to review. So I think we're kind of used to paperwork. I know it's a hassle and like I think most of us, ex we'll, we'll just do whatever is required. Like we totally understand that, you know, to open the doors of a school where there's children, it, it, you're putting a lot of trust into us and that if we have to sign papers and you know give you I've had to give criminal background checks when I've done certain things like uh, not school visits but other like more lengthy things where I've taught like week-long workshops and um, 
you know, we know how the world works. And uh, I think sometimes people perceive authors as being, you know, these kind of either divas or or these sort of really like crunchy granola kind of people. And <laughs> we're kind of, or, or dead, or dead white guys. Um, but you know, we're, we're You're none of those most of us most of us have had bureaucratic jobs, and um, so we totally understand that. So just I wouldn't be afraid of it. I, you know, I, I, do, I don't think your your illustrator is gonna gonna mind. But it would be nice to know that in uh, advance, so we make sure that we have whatever documents or that we have the information that you need. So just let them know before they arrive, I guess. I honestly feel nervous sending paperwork to you sometimes. Yeah. So when I book school visits, I send a contract and an invoice, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I know they don't have much time, but like, this is kind of annoying, but like, it's just, it needs to be done, we get it. It's a necessary evil, yeah. I think, it's the, you know, the, the, the paperwork to get done so you guys get paid and your end is, is uh, you know, the, the, the school board is happy with, or whoever is funding it is, happy with the I's being dotted and the T's being crossed. So, uh, if, are there any other questions? We've got one more in the front row. Collaborative visits with schools and public libraries. Have any of you guys done that? Yeah. yeah. I was uh, the writer in residence at Vancouver Public Library, and well, whenever I get an opportunity to do this, which is to invite some of my colleagues to sit behind a desk and just talk nonsense for an hour, um, I do it. So my, my advice would be like, if you do have an author that has a connection and, and you know is interested in visiting your library, if you want to make more of a thing of it, get that author to use them as a resource because they can say, oh yeah, I'll invite three friends. You know, will there be wine? Because if there's wine, um, no, but they'll definitely, yeah, probably not. Um, but they'll, but, uh, but we're all very connected to each other. It's all, it's all like, and, and uh, we like to support and help each other. So most of us will be able to organize a bit of a squad if that's what you're looking for. Like we rarely like to be alone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, please come with me. I do not want to be alone. So we are almost out of time. Uh, just one final thought, building on your question there. I've seen a couple of things advertised. I would love to do this. Is a um, you know sort of like a super author visit, which is be more like a mini children's lit conference that you could do with a group of schools and a public library and local authors and perhaps even one author that you've brought in. Um, that would be a lot of, you know, a lot of like work, a lot of prep, but something really valuable for kids to have either a half day or a whole day where they're meeting authors and seeing work done. So that's a, an idea to leave you with. Uh, can yeah, I just, hurry up. Can I just, just winding up, I just want to invite uh, everybody in the panel to plug whatever they need to plug. I know Claire Bell and Mia have another panel here tomorrow. At what time is your panel? Could you give us a little plug for that? Um, so we have a marketing collective called Las Musas, which is a group of Latinx authors who are sort of uplifting each other and helping each other get the word out about our books. So we'll, we'll be talking about children's lit and own voices and um, Latinx stories. So it's going to be really good. And you should come. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, me and Deb are signing, or I should, my grammar, that's grammar, I'm an author. <laughs> Deb and I are signing right now over at that table, but I am also signing uh, at, uh, at, you know, uh, when we're done, and as soon as we're done, I'm running over to the Orca booth, which is, uh, is anybody here from Orca who knows the number of the Orca booth? Right? It's, it's really just like, yeah, down there, yeah. And it's time, and uh, thanks, for thanks for coming.